So then guys, a bit of a different background today. I'm at CES 2025, where I'm here for the next few days to see what kind of technology innovations we're gonna be seeing in 2025. Come on, let's go and take a look. So here I am then guys, this is my hotel room where I'm going to be camping out for the next few days, giving you the lowdown of everything that I have seen at CES. So today, what I've been able to go to, I've been able to go to the AMD conference to begin with, and this is the introduction of the brand new chipsets that they've introduced, what I must admit are quite impressive, but let me talk a little bit more detail about these. Now to start with, AMD did introduce a brand new desktop chipset with their 3D cache inside there. And literally this is the powerhouse of all powerhouses of chipsets. This is the new 9950X3D. And this new chipset is a 16 core version of this. And obviously this is far more powerful than say the 9800 uh, you know, X3D, what's out there right now. For example, in my gaming rig, I actually have a 7 800 X3D, it's the last generation. But as you can see from the charts here, you can see that AMD are definitely promising, definitely better performance in gaming. In some, some cases, sometimes around about an average of 30%, what is really, really impressive to see. But the other thing that AMD have also claimed is that this is definitely one of the best chipsets out there for creators out there. So if you guys weren't, say, on a MacBook and you actually wanted, say, a desktop sort of chip, or let's say you had a Mac Mini with the M4 Pro and you wanted a Windows alternative, this chip is definitely going to be really, really helpful for you out there. And in fact, you know, this is the thing what's saying AMD are pushing out there. They're saying they're better than the Intel Ultra sort of series, the latest generation than that. And they're far, far faster with that. Well, it's definitely impressive to see. But then something else that AMD also introduced was their sort of lower line of their AI chips. As you know, right now we have, say, the AMD Ryzen AI 9. Well, guess what? We got introduced to the AMD Ryzen AI 7 and also the 5 series. And this is going to be really, really great to actually have, say, in the likes of, say, inside of laptops and things like this. This is kind of sort of chips that are going to be on par in comparison to, say, the M4 MacBook Pro and, say, the M3 MacBook air right now and to be honest the figures that were being shown they were quite impressive to see again mainly targeting intel out there but then there was one more thing that amd did show us at their event and that was their latest and greatest ai max chip and this time for the first time amd even compared it to the likes of the m4 pro from apple in their charts, as you can see right here, by doing some sort of different sort of benchmarks and things like this, you can even see that they are saying that with the 12 core M4 Pro, remember this is the binned version, that their chip is definitely better than this version of it. But then compared to the full fat M4 Pro out there, then obviously, you know, it's actually around about the same or sometimes slightly better or sometimes slightly worse. But the main thing what I take away from this is that obviously this chip is a mobile chip, this Max one. And one thing that obviously they've also claimed with this is that the graphics capability and also the AI capability, the NPU is one of the best out there and in fact there was even a claim out there that saying if you want to do ai tasks on this actual chip it's actually faster than you know an rtx 4090 instead of doing those tasks for you what's absolutely incredible to see now definitely i'm going to get my hands on one of these new kind of uh, laptops compare it to the m4 pro and also i'm going to compare it to the m4 max but what i am thinking is obviously there was no pricing of kind of new kind of laptops that are going to be coming out there was obviously the mention that 
Shell are going to be bringing out their new line with these AMDs and also some other companies, but we don't actually know the price of what, say, an average sort of laptop's going to cost with this. So, you know, the thing is what I would be taking away from this at this point is that if, say, you know, Dell bring out a laptop and that costs you, say, $1,300 or even $1,500 and it's got this inside of this, you know, this chip, and they're saying that it's better than the 12-core M4 Pro, well, yeah, this is where things are going to get very, very interesting. But obviously, with this Mac chip, if it's the other end of the scale, they're going to charge, say, $2,500 for a Dell laptop or Lenovo or Asus or whoever like that, then obviously, you know, I don't think they're going to have to worry too much, Apple is, that obviously that, you know, their M4 Pro with the 12 core, you can pick that up for about $2,000 with that inside of it. So this is going to be really, really interesting to see what the price point is going to be and also what kind of differences we're going to see there in performance wise and, you know, in differences between Windows and Mac. So this is going to be great to see too. The only other thing that AMD have also introduced is their brand new Z2 chipset. Now, if you know anything about, say, mobile handhelds or gaming like the Asus Rock, you know, things like this, or the Ally, for example, and there's the Lenovo machine and things like this, and even the, say, the likes of, say, the Steam Deck, what well, doesn't officially use a Z1 or Z1 chip inside of its own custom chip. Well, the new Z2 has been introduced, a new APU, and it's also going to have support of, say, FSR. 4.0 and this is going to be crazy to see and in fact it has been claimed already that Lenovo uh, you know you've got the Ally the next generation of that and even the Steam Deck are going to be using this new chipset and this is again going to be super interesting to see how well this kind of chip or how powerful this APU is going to be into the future but talk about graphics and things like this one thing I'm going to do right now is I'm heading off out now to the NVIDIA convention and once I've completed that I'm going to resume the rest of this video. So just like that, we are now in the dark and my voice sounds a bit better now. I've got a better microphone equipped and the NVIDIA event has just finished. So let me tell you about all the details about this event, what I've just seen. To me, and probably to you guys, probably the main highlight we saw was the brand new graphics cards that have just been announced. And these run on NVIDIA's brand new Blackwell architecture. And to be honest, they are super, super powerful. What was actually announced, what I thought was absolutely incredible. Do you know the RTX 4090, what exists right now, the desktop version of that? And that costs about $1,600 to buy that one. Maybe you can get some deals elsewhere on this one for the 40. Well, the announcement came out with the 5070, what came out, and this has the same power as a 4090 Founders Edition. And yet, this only costs $550. We're talking about three times less for the same power as a 4090, what is absolutely incredible. There was the announcement of the 5070 Ti, and then there was also the announcement of the 5080, and then of course there is the 5090. And just in case you want to know, the 5090 has gone up in price. It now starts at $1,999 US dollars. It's gone up by $400. But what NVIDIA are claiming is, is that with its NPU sort of potential and its power will obviously make things like DLS4 work and things like this, then obviously this is three times more powerful than what we got with the 4090. What's absolutely incredible to see. And the great news is that these new 50,000 graphics cards are coming out very, very soon in January time. And then on top of that too, that we've also had the announcement already for the laptop variant of these and including that you could potentially get yourself a 5090 and in a laptop and this would cost us around about $2,800 to $2,900. We weren't specific and told what laptop model this will be. Maybe I'll find out in CES later on this week, but it's crazy to think that it costs about 2,800 or 2,900, and this would be for say a 14 inch model potentially, and yet say with the M4 Max MacBook Pro and the baseline version, so this is the minimum amount of cores in the M4 Max, 
then obviously this costs even more. This starts at $3,200 for a 14 inch model. So this is absolutely incredible from Nvidia that we've got this. And this is equipped with say one of those new Intel chips that have also just been announced, the new Intel Ultra, the next generation for laptops. So this is definitely be an interesting space to see what this is going to bring to the table compared to say a MacBook Pro. And I'm definitely gonna get my hands on one to do a comparison for you in the future because I'm really, really interested to see what's gonna happen here. But to sum it up for today, I think the two main highlights I wanted to talk about in today's video was obviously the main sort of chip competitors out there, what they have brought to the table, the likes of AMD and also the likes of say NVIDIA with their graphic sort of potential. And it has been really interesting, like I said, to see what they brought to the table. Obviously, I haven't heard any updates really from Intel. I know Intel have brought out some bits and pieces. Maybe I'll catch up with that later on in CES. And also the same thing with Qualcomm as well. Nothing new has recently been announced them for their desktop sorts of bits and pieces what well, I've seen maybe I've missed out on this but you know if there is any information I will find that out during the week but do stick around guys because obviously I'm going to be making a lot more content with CES coming up into the future and also more sort of products and relevance to say iPhones and MacBooks too so definitely do stick around and if you do want to see those new videos make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell too because you won't want to miss out on any of those videos because they're definitely going to be great this week and with that as well well, guys it's time to wrap up the video so if you have enjoyed watching it please do press the like button also if you want to hear the latest apple news reviews and comparisons too make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell as well until next time guys i'll see you really soon take care bye bye